Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another What's Up Wednesday. Got a fun show for you tonight. We're going to try a few things different, including the format of the entire program tonight. We're going to get right into our content in just mere seconds. Uh, you're looking at me. I'm in the cab of my Winnebago Travado 59GL, and the other cam, the Truma cam, is pointed at my control panels. What we're going to do tonight is give a demo of making hot water. And this came from a question from Donna. She is uh, considering a, a Solus 59P by Winnebago. And she's kind of questioning, still has only a 2.6 gallon hot water tank. So I want to share with you tonight how that works, Donna, and anybody else that might be confused on how this works. And you are so welcome, Donna. But before we do the actual demo, we're gonna, uh, well, I'm gonna get the demo in just a second. This is on the Truma Combi. It makes hot water and it makes heat as a furnace from either propane or electric or both. I'm trying a new audio system, so if somebody can give me a thumb up just to make sure my audio is coming through and I'm not yelling too loud, um, that would be great. The um, Stay tuned after the demo because what we're going to do is we're going to tell you some uh, very important YouTube live streams, including touring the Hilt adventure truck with Sunshine State RVs in the morning. And then on Friday, two days from now, we're going to be streaming three live streams from Warsaw, Poland, doing an RV show, showing you what vans in Europe look like. You better be sitting down and don't spill your coffee. Put a lid on that coffee mug because you're going to drop your pants when you see what the Europeans are doing compared to what the Americans are doing. So that's what we're going to do. All right. And then we're doing, ask me anything about van life. I've been doing this for a few minutes. So just be a delight to answer some questions. I see a lot of regulars. We're going to be saying hi to them here in just a few minutes. All right, let's get into this uh, hot water business. What is uh, Truma um, 101? We're going to make uh, hot water or heat. And then we're going to time how long. I'm actually going to turn the thing on. And we're going to let it cook for a few minutes, about 20. And then we'll see how long it actually takes to get to the temperature where the icon stops flashing, indicating that you have hot water. And they're going to measure the temperature of that hot water from my tap in my galley. It should be about 140 degrees. It's really too hot. They need to dial that back to about 120, in my opinion. Maybe there's a way to do that. I don't know. Um, and um, if you're not familiar with Truma, this is what the device is. And Truma.com is where you can go to get all the specifications on how much does it consume on propane, electric, output, BTUs. It's actually very very hot on propane and it's sort of hot on electric. Um, it's pretty small. It fits under the uh, dining seat opposite me on um, the other side of my table. So it's pretty small, pretty uh, uh, powerful and pretty darn efficient. It sips propane, it guzzles electricity. So if you are a van traveler that has a lithium equipped rig and you have a heat system like this, electric or propane, please do not make the mistake I did early on in my game. And I just try to save my propane by running on electricity. I ran my uh, nearly 9,000 watt battery dead in about three hours, four hours, because the thing consumes about 22 to 2,400 watts in an hour. Do the math. Don't save your propane. If you're not plugged into shore power, use propane. Fair enough? All right, so that's what this little gizmo is. Um, this is a Truma Combi. There's a couple flavors. And Donna, for your uh, Winnebago Solus 59P, it does come with this unit. Uh, the pocket on the Solus comes with a couple different flavors of Truma. Uh, again, visit their website there, truma.com, and you can get all the, uh, all, the, um, all the specs. Pretty cool, right? All right, so that's what we're going to do. So let me give a live demo here. Uh, let me just make sure that my audio is. Let me give me a heads up. Uh, appreciate that. Looks like it's okay. All right, so let me switch to the Truma cam. All right, here we go. And I got my door open. It's super windy here today, so I'm trying a different mic setup. All right, so there's a couple different things you want to do. This is my Truma furnace right here. We'll try and keep the reflection to a minimum. There's two propane on off. One is outside. You want to make sure that's on. And actually, every time you fill your propane, somebody, some personnel does it for you. Make sure you turn it on after they're done. They usually turn it off. And then once you're inside and you need heat or furnace, 
well, they kind of do the same thing, don't they? <laughs> Furnace, heat, or hot water, you want to turn your propane on here. That engages the valve on the inside. And then this is the control. So it's a rotary dial here. And it kind of scroll through these settings. Um, some of these I've never used in all these years. Uh, this is heat for the furnace. This is hot water. And this is the mode. And I've had it on electric because I'm plugged in. It's been chilly at night. You can dial this to mix, which is a combination of electric or propane. I've never really used this. I don't kind of see the point. Um, so I do either gas, which is propane, or electric. In this case, gas is a gazillion times faster. We're going to use gas. And since we're not, whoops, gas. And then to engage that, like an enter button, you press the middle button, just like that. So now what we should see, well, we're doing, we don't want heat. Hold on, folks. Oh, let me back up. Okay. So again, that's the, that's how the heat works. What we want is hot water. We want it hot. Um, I use hot. I've never used, well, I did use boost in the thing, but I find hot is fine. Eco is not hot enough. You run through a lot of hot water really fast. So hot should be about 140 degrees out of the faucet. So what we're going to do is we're going to say hot is what we want. Push the enter button. We're going to run off ga gas, propane. And now we're just going to kind of let this cook. Gas, we're good. And let's see what happens. What we should see is this little icon here start blinking once the system, there it goes. So what it's going to do is actualize the system, which is under the seat right here. And you're not going to be able to hear, but there is like a um, electronic ignition. And then you can actually hear the puff of propane going in to start the heating process. All right, so let's check the time. It's five minutes after six central time. This should go for about 15 to 20 minutes. And what I've discovered over the years is that when this thing is nearly at temperature, it has a hot metal smell to it, not dangerous, but just enough to say, hey, your thing is ready to use hot water. So let's let that cook. Put you right back here. There, I just heard the igniter go off. And I heard a little puff of propane. So let's let that sit. We're gonna check this in 15 minutes and see if this is still blinking. When it's done blinking, Donna, you got hot water. Now here's the deal. For those of you that have used a hot water system like this, where it's not continuous flow, we're in vans, so we don't have continuous resources. We typically don't plug in our hoses and all that stuff. Um, so we take what's called a Navy shower, which means you have a very short amount of time to go through those two and a half gallons of hot water. It mixes at the sink or the shower. And I'm going to describe what why the water miser is so popular these days in vans because you'll see how much waste water there is getting the hot water to the galley so the way the, the a shower works is you uh, get the water hot and what i've learned as a trick is i use the cold water at the tap in the bathroom to clean the teeth kind of get the hands washed kind of you know doing some of your bathroom duties and by the time I've done all that, the hot water is at the tap. So I do all that before I use the hot water out of the tap or in the uh, in the shower. And then the warm water's right there. I get everything wet. I do face first and then rinse and then do the rest of the body um, and rinse. And two people using that method, I think, can get a decent shower. Um, not soaking, not washing you know yards of hair. But um, I am very easily not running out of water using that method, even though there's only two and a half gallons to go. And what I've learned is you don't soak in your van showers. You get clean. And once I'm done showering, what I do is I clean all the walls of and the door, inside door, of the bathroom. That's how I keep my bathroom clean. That's how I've been doing it for years. It works pretty great, and it washes all into the drain. How are we doing so far? Okay, so let's let that cook. And um, I'm not seeing, sometimes you might see an error code. That's probably one of the buttons is turned off to uh, turn the propane source on. Um, I've only had one or two weird codes over the years, and that's what tonight is not about. So, all right, let's say hi to some folks. 
And oh, before I do that, yeah, just give us a thumb up. If you're having a good night tonight, appreciate you being here. Um, this has been a crazy month, and uh, this is our question format. If you can help us out and use three stars, three question marks, that helps me find your question or comment and post it for us to um, answer. Fair enough. Got a great group here tonight. I just love this. Okay, here's the live stream announcement. So these are pretty big deal. So I've been working closely with S uh, Sunshine State RVs, as you know, over the last uh, many, many months. And uh, they have a Hilt uh, G GVX, G Global Expedition Vehicle, GXV, I guess it is, which is built by Storyteller. And we've done a couple videos over the last four months on this. And what we're doing is Sunshine has one of these rigs on site at their lot in Gainesville, Florida. And what we want to do is have Nick kind of walk us through. Uh, he's going to have a camera man or woman. I'm not sure which. Uh, follow him through the rig. We're going to examine it on the inside and on the outside, then talk about some of the, the, the um, specifications on the inside when he's sitting at the table. So you don't want to miss that. That's at 11 a.m. Eastern tomorrow. And I'm really excited that um, Peter from Rover Vans, he's going to be on site in Warsaw, Poland, where the largest RV show in Central Europe is going to occur. And he's going to walk us through uh, on Friday three different vans that would be kind of equivalent to what we're used to over here in the Class B RV space. Um, I'm going to hope he's going to find an adventure van. When I was doing some homework, I didn't find any adventure vans. That's what he's really familiar with. A lot of touring coaches. So we're going to do three different streams at 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m. Central. So set your clocks, mark your calendars, and... Don't miss that. We're going to run for about 30 minutes for each one. Um, 8 a.m. here is like, man, I think it's 2 or 3 in the afternoon there. The show closes at 5, Polish, Poland time. So um, you don't want to miss that. And if you snap the um, URL there at the bottom, you can go to the uh, the website, webpage for that camper van show in Warsaw, Poland, and see what brands are there. And you can kind of click around and see what's going on. Um, uh, let me just check something really fast here. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> All right, but wait, we got more. Um, then the following Wednesday, next Wednesday morning, April 10 at 8 a.m., we're going to get a factory tour of Vandermoon Van Gear. And he is the exclusive um, distributor for that gear. And we got some secrets we can't talk about yet, but it's going to start appearing at brands you're probably familiar with. Um, but we are, we're going to get a factory tour, um, in, in Poland. Uh, he's going to be there with the team. This is, uh, the lady putting the, uh, the gear together. They make it all in house, all designed in house. This is not designed in America, made in China. It's all done right there. Ladies and gentlemen, here's what some of the gear looks like. Uh, you, hopefully you've seen a, a couple of videos I've done with Peter and you've seen what this looks like in his rig. So you don't want to miss any of that. So, um, I don't have any way to put this in your calendar. So I'm just asking you to subscribe to the channel if uh, you haven't. And then when we go live, you'll get notifications. I think you get a live notice 30 minutes before. And then once it goes live, uh, you, uh, you'll get a notice again. So, but you only get that if you subscribe. All right. So with that, we're watching our water. It's cooking. Uh, we've got, I don't know, 15, 10, 15 minutes to go. Um, I've never done this before in this format, so I'm really excited. All right, let's um, say hi to some folks and see if we can answer some questions. Um, somebody remind me. Well, I'll keep. <laughs> I kind of given up on the Apple Watch. I just I don't. It's, I, I really haven't kind of missed it in a lot of ways, except for like when I'm setting a timer and my phone's being used for the camera. So um, if somebody hasn't noticed anything in like ten minutes, let me know. But um, yeah, it went back to analog watches. It's pretty cool, actually. I'm very excited. All right. Best thing about it is they only tell time, you get zero notifications, and you don't have to charge the damn thing every day because uh, it's got a big old wheel in there that winds the spring. So it's uh, pretty cool. All right, let's um, say hi to some folks. We may actually start Libation Live. We're just changing. I've kind of experimented with a new format tonight, so let me know what you think. Uh, here's Sharon in the house. Great to see you, ma'am. 298. So I'm in Arlington, Texas, the Dallas Fort Worth area. Gas at Costco was three dollars seven cents a day. It's all the way up to about three fifty, depending on the um, on the gas station. It's like they make gas in Texas. They drill oil in Texas. So I'm like, this should be the cheapest gas in the country. But I mean, who knows? Rob is on his way to Bisbee. He's currently in Moab. You have to tell us sir, some stories about that. Here's Matt. Uh, he's in Bishop, Georgia. Nice. Overjoyed to be on the road. Yes, sir. 
Uh, we're going to be seeing him this weekend for the Eclipse and then in Bisbee, which is pretty cool. Hopefully I'm not in your face too much. Um, let's see, K3, look at this. You are in Chile. Okay, got to write that down. That's, how can I do a screenshot? Let's see. I don't want to touch anything. Chile. Somebody remember, remind me, Chile, for uh, flag on the map. Um, so great. Here's Stuart. Uh, Stuart, I think you and I are scheduled to have a Zoom chat this Saturday. Okay, I hope I got the right Stuart. Um, so he was uh, good enough to use a QR code from Sunshine State RVs, got the contact information, and we're going to have a chat about his band that he wants to buy. That's the whole point. Uh, let's see, we got Bill and Joe in the house. Great to see you, gentlemen. Here's Dale. Dale, good to see you. This might be a new name, Mc McInvale in San Diego. Uh, quarters uh, for hot water in the morning, for shaving, for washing up a cup of the microwaves. Uh, same for washing dishes. Um, well, if you're doing all that from a microwave cup of water, you're doing pretty good, sir. You're much braver than me. <laughs> I just turn my thing on and hang tight. Uh, drink some coffee while I'm waiting. Here's uh, Eric, but thank you for sharing. That's pretty cool. Doesn't mean you necessarily need one of these fancy Truma things. This comes with a Travado, which is pretty cool. And a lot of other bands. Got Eric in the house. Good to see you, sir. Uh, Jane and Roger, nice to see you this week. Gas, 380. Yeah, gas is just kind of expensive everywhere. Byron, Illinois. You have any snow up there? There's John in the house, back at home base in New York for the eclipse. 38 and rainy. Yeah, the forecast here on Monday afternoon, midday, when the eclipse is supposed to be happening, is kind of iffy. I'm glad to be here. I've seen one before, so I wouldn't be devastated to see it in cloudy weather. It'd be kind of a different experience altogether. But man, if I was one of these people that spent a gazillion dollars flying here and booking hotels and because it's going to be a zoo um, and it's cloudy, uh, it'd be kind of a bummer. But uh, nonetheless, Mother Nature does her thing, right? <laughs> so I'll pray for some clear weather. Um, there's Marcia. Uh, even after some rain, gas, uh, 350. I'm not sure what it says about this group. We actually tune in for how to make hot water. <laughs> Let's try to solve problems here, uh, Marcia, but thank you um, for the endless adventure. Headed west in six days for Bisbee. Yeah, it's gonna be so awesome. I'm so excited. Um, my partner Kyle's gonna be joining me. Um, that's the first time he's ever done something like this in all these years, so he's pretty excited. Um... <laughs> yeah, my recipe for ice, uh, Matt, is go to the store and get your seven pound bag it costs you about three bucks and it fits in the freezer perfectly because I know what kind of rig you have, sir. You can actually get four bags in there pretty easily. Um, make it nice. Some of you folks actually make ice in your vans, which is braver than me. Um, here's Justin. Let's see, we got uh, Gary in the house. 37. It's still winter, right? You guys got the um, first of April, a couple weeks, snow yet? That was one of my funniest things in when I lived in uh, Chicago land is. It always snowed just a little bit, just enough to cover the ground and the little crocuses and irises where those things coming up, um, daffodils and what have with some snow. And it always happened the first two weeks in April, right? Here's Justin in the house. Hopefully, sure, all your um, uh, rig issues have been resolved. Oh, it's, you got a cheap, cheap gas down there. Uh, here's Sherry's in the house. Apple Valley, Utah. Wow, you've, you've been getting around west there uh, lady that's so great here's peggy in the house hi peggy and scott hi peggy and ashley high springs um gas 380 for diesel yeah uh, <laughs> uh let's see here's david in the house hello from upstate new york experiencing winter weather freezing snow freezing rain but warm and cozy in my travado gas around 345 good job sir Bob Scott in the house. This has been a while, sir. Nice to have you here. Flager Beach. Yes, sir. <laughs> I agree with Sherry. Bob Scott, everybody say, hey, Bob, what's up? <laughs> Here's Tarzan and Jane. They're in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Oof. You guys have been south for a while. You must be putting on your winter parka. Um, Russ and Jane being so great. We've seen them uh, at various campouts over the last couple, three months. It's just great. Uh, so great. Uh, let's see. Katmandu, how do y'all? Great to see you. Uh, here's uh, David. Uh, hi, yo, from Chicago. Oh, bit snowy, 37 degrees. That was Ryan in the house. He's a long, loyal, long-time viewer. Here's Neil and Britt. Hey, everyone. Uh, hey, everyone. And Scott, Scott, you forgot. 
to have an induction cooktop as an option on this morning poll. Yeah, I should have put um, sink and shower because if you're just boiling some water, there's probably better ways to do it than this. I would use a cup and a microwave myself, but um, it, but it's a good point. I should have been a little more descriptive. Uh, although you might be proud of me by putting in the uh, the solar bag on top of your van that heats up in the sun. Uh, you know, thinking of the adventure van people. Um, audio good, thank you, Sherry. Uh, hopefully it's not too loud. Um, trying something new. Let's see. So here's Justin. He's had some some pretty uh, frustrating repairs. Still waiting on proper repairs. Escalated Winnebago corporate. Now things are finally moving along faster. But Bisbee will be a close one to make. I know how that goes. That's what I was up against last year when my uh, van got rear-ended in Fort Worth, Texas. And that was, I had one day to get to Bisbee. I got there, I think, on Friday, right? can't remember. I think I drove all day Thursday. I can't remember. I blocked it out of my brain. Um, here's Ms. Lee. Good to see you. North Carolina. Thank you for being here. Uh, um, so Endless uh, Adventure says, Bisbee should be an experience. <laughs> yes, it will be. I promise you. Um, love our Truma. David, yes. Uh, it's been a great system for me. Um, so here's Neil and Britt, uh, back, gasoline back under $3 for unleaded in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Now oh, the old 10 cent discount at the Walmart. Nice. Um, let's see. Here's David's got a question. Um, David says, my Volta system turns off randomly six to 10 times in the last three months. Is there a firmware uh, needed? If so, do I need to con contact Volta? Let me say turn off. What does that mean exactly? The inverter won't come on. The system just goes dark. I don't know what that means. Um, but if it's happening more than once, yeah, what I would do is uh, contact Volta. Just go to their website. Under the little hamburger menu is uh, support and give them a call. If there is a physical issue, including a firmware update, I don't think they do those over the air. I might be wrong. Uh, you'll need to go to a uh, Winnebago dealer um, that sells Travato that would be familiar with Volta. Uh, so hopefully it's nothing serious. Uh, Frisco T in Frisco, Texas. <laughs> so awesome. Um, let's see. Uh, here's YouTube user. <laughs> South Vienna, Ohio. Ooh, South Vienna. That sounds fancy. Now we're on time. Uh, still blinking. Let me show you. And unfortunately, everything is open because it's beautiful weather here. A little breezy. Um, so it might be hard to smell, but it's definitely not to that point yet. So this is kind of what you do. You figure out what you're going to do for 20 minutes. Do your bathroom routine letting that uh, cook off to hot water. And uh, actually, I lied. What I do is I don't, how do I do this? I, I, I don't do my teeth cleaning because that uses the bathroom sink, which has a mixed valve. So it would take wa hot water out of the system is um, I wait till the uh, truma is hot. So no water is passing through the system, which would make it longer to heat. So once it as is at temperature, then I clean my teeth and do some of what's in my bathroom because I have a mixed valve. So it's gonna pull uh, water to a temperature of uh, 38 centigrade, whatever the hell that is. Uh, so I don't want any water going through the system until it's hot so that when it is, when I am then cleaning my teeth, um, I am uh, using hot water from the system and uh, then it's turning from cold to warm to hot when I'm done with that process. So I kind of misspoke earlier. And the other key is we'll show you is once it's hot, I turn it off because it's really easy to forget that once the water, the two and a, two and a half gallons is used up, it's going to keep trying to make hot water. 
which is kind of a waste of propane at that point, in my opinion, unless there's another person that is wanting to um, shower. Um, so sorry for that misspeak. Let's see. Uh, Deborah wants to know, uh, David, what year is your van? Do you have a uh, Volta Flex? So that's the, there's kind of three versions of the Volta Pack these days. I have the, I think they called it the VIP. And then there's a the Flex. Now there's this new system. So um, that's what they're talking about there. There's Pam. <laughs> Microphone Pam. Great to see you. Fort Myers. I love Fort Myers. Hopefully all the hurricane stuff is getting cleaned up. That's been a little over a year ago, right? A year and a half ago, maybe. Uh, I street camped, urban camp downtown Fort Myers many times. Just a great downtown area. Um, <laughs> rubbing it in. Uh, we, uh, Neil and Britt say, we luckily take some nice long showers with a big 50 gallon instant hot water Truma Aquago. And they make a whole lot of systems. And I think I've seen Truma systems now pulling off chassis fuel. That's definitely the trend with like Timberline. <sighs> S-bar, right? Is that the other one where they use the fuel source is the chassis fuel, gas or diesel. And there was kind of a gap in in um, the product offering there with Truma. And I think we've seen that at the um, at the um, RV show in Tampa, uh, Super Show, in January of this year. Uh, let's see, here's SK saying hi from College Station. Pam famous microphone Pam. <laughs> uh, so here's um, Pacific Northwest RVing. I have the Thor scope. I have the Truma Combi, but only propane to heat the van and no water, electric to heat van or water. Um, that doesn't sound right at all. Um, there is kind of a uh, entry level version of the combi. Um, it may not have the electric, the electric elements. There's three versions. I can't remember what they were off the top of my head, um, but you may have one without the electric component, in which case you would have propane only, which kind of makes sense. Still cool. Still works. Um, you want to visit their website, trimma.com. And, uh, but that's, that would not surprise me. Um, if that's the case, just because of the price point. Uh, <laughs> Justin says he only uses three gallons of shower uh, water, three gallons of water per shower. Um, yeah, once you kind of do the RV thing, I'm even turning off water at the, um, you know, to camp, um, to, to clean my teeth or whatever, just in a kind of a fast shower anyway, because I'm just used to it now. Um, A YouTube user says, do you get my email from about three weeks ago? Probably. I'm very behind on email. So hang in there with me. Appreciate that. Um, so here's John. They have a, a panoramic uh, camper van. Uh, we've taken two showers with the tra a Truma tank with no issues at all, uh, running out of hot water. Yeah, so you kind of learn how it works. Um, and again, get everything wet. That's what I do. Do your face head, rinse that so you can see what the heck's going on. Then soap up everything else and then um, use the uh, uh, wand uh, for, and then do some spins and wand for the legs. And it's amazing how fast you get a shower done. Um, Roger in here goes to the uh, the uh, aviation show uh, in Oshkosh every year. He stays for like days and says he showers every night, which I believe because he's a data genius. And and uh, takes a shower every day. But once you get your system down, it's really, um, really simple. Yeah, they're talking about, so Neil and Brett, yeah, same for me. Um, Brett is uh, a different story. I always have the water turn temp way down. Uh, because of a mixing valve, it mixes it to a nice temperature, still a little hot, so it kind of brings the, the temperature way down. What I found using the eco mode, Neil, and on this system, I can actually start to smell it, which is kind of interesting. Um, it, it used all the hot water, not just some of the hot water, uh, mixing with, with uh, cold on hot mode. Made it last longer on eco mode. It was almost all of the two and a half gallons. Here's Alfred in the house. Good to see you, sir. Southern California. Oh, yeah. Here's Bobby. Hi, Bobby. Good to see you. 
Hello from Houston, 77, no humidity. Whoop. Uh, paid 309 for gas this morning. Yeah. Um, here's Peggy. Hi, Scott. How are you? Hope you've had some better days. I've uh, been sending you good thoughts. Uh, thank you, Peggy. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's been a tough month. Really high highs and really low lows. Thank you for that. Uh, uh oh, Denim Roos in Tupelo, Mississippi. That's where Elvis was born, right? Tupelo. Um, Farrah says, hey, Scott, I know you love the moon space in Texas this morning. If you're going to Totality in Texas, that would be a great video. We are. Some of us are going to be together, and uh, we're not doing a video. Um, it's supposed to be cloudy. may even rain. So that'd be kind of a wah, wah, wah. Um, we might do a live just to see, but um, what everybody thoughts were on it, that would be an idea. Uh, here's SK saying, not sure if you're on here, uh, we passed White Travato on 290 in Houston yesterday. Uh, so Roads of Life is up north, <laughs> not in Houston. Uh, it got cold today. Yeah, I can definitely hear or hear. This thing is really silent, by the way. Even on furnace mode, the trima is super silent. Um, spring is here. Um, uh, Robert Hume in Dallas-Fort Worth area. Everything's got covered in pollen. Let's see the dirty windshield, sort of, right? And just enough rain to make the van absolutely horrible looking. Um, yeah, thumbs up. Appreciate that, everybody. Thanks for being here. Got a great group, big group. Um, all right. How are we doing on time? So we're at 20, let's call it 25 minutes. What do you think? Um, so this thing should just to be about done. The colder the water, clearly, the more heating has to do. Um, I think in the Truman Manual, it said it goes from 54 degrees, whatever water's in the system already. Um, it goes... So 54 to 140 in 20 to 25 minutes. So we're kind of still on schedule. It's I'm looking at the flashing icon. And when you're kind of hot to trot and take that shower in the golf course parking lot that's a harvest host, ah, it's like those last few minutes are like, holy cow, what's up? Yeah, chili on the map. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Uh, Uh, so here's SK saying, let's just, uh, their Fitbit charge it three to five days, moving to Garmin once this breaks. Uh, nice job. Uh, let's see. Uh, so here's Anna. Scott, could you show us how to program the trim heater so it starts at 4 a.m.? No, because I've never done it. Um, and you get up early. <laughs> I just find there's things to do for the, you know, 20, 25 minutes. I've... You can set a timer, uh, ladies and gentlemen. There's uh, how to do that, probably a video somewhere. I just, I've never done it. I, I don't like talking about things I really haven't done. So I apologize to let you down there. It has a timer thing too. Maybe that's what you're talking about. Um, I just found it never really needed it. You know, 20, 25 minutes and van life goes like that. So make coffee, clean up the van, um, take out the trash, eat. <laughs> um, Sorry about that. Uh, here is uh, Mark in Orlando, but apparently he's in Finlandia, Colombia. Holy cow, we're adding flags to the map tonight. This is awesome. I'm not sure if there is one there or not. Here's GEG -E John. Hey, Scott and gang. 50 degrees in Spokane. Uh, has had it, had is 410. That's. Gas price, I guess. Looking forward to going to Bisbee. First excursion in storyteller mode. Oh, that's right. He got rid of his Travato. Wow, congrats. We're excited to uh, see how you are doing with that. Uh, let's see. Here's um, Microphone Pam heading to uh, heading out started to Tennessee to work on new base camp land. Hopefully catch parcel eclipse. Yeah, it's, it's crazy down here. There's t-shirts everywhere. Um, some of the sm small towns, I've even heard some of the big towns are prepared to declare a state of emergency and because um, of all the people coming in and and uh, Alfred's going to Bisbee and Bliss is going to Bisbee. Uh, Kyle will be in Bisbee. <laughs> it's so great. Be on the ferns in Bisbee. It's going to be a Bisbee 2.0. Uh, 
2024. That's going to be so great. Um, so here's Roads of Life talking about a harvest host site. I'm s assuming. Highly recommend Arcadian Moon Winery, very close to Higginsville, Missouri. 8:30 today, beautiful place. So maybe it's not a. Uh, here's Van Life with Steve. Um, I think we still have room for you, Steve. So depending on the weather, you're welcome to join us. Um, uh, yeah, it's it's changing. It's not getting a lot better from what I'm seeing, but it is changing. So let's hope Mother Nature gives Texas a big puff of air. And um, <laughs> clears the skies. That would be a van life miracle, wouldn't it? Cloudy. Then for the one hour on either side of the totality, it clears up and it gets cloudy again. That's when you know God's looking out for us. That'd be so great. Uh, let's see, Neil Britt, emergency boil if you run out of propane. No idea what you're talking about, sir. Unless you're talking about your induction cooktop. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> I don't know. Um, that's a good question. Tommy, thank you for joining us today. Appreciate that. How do you hang up the bathroom towels to dry after a shower? So what I do, because I have a Murphy bed that flips up when I'm out of bed, I lay the towel this way across the top of it, and I have a USB fan uh, that plugs in and kind of hangs, and it blows air. And about, I don't know, an hour or whatever, uh, I flip it over, turn it around, and so it gets dry really fast, just in just a couple of hours. Um, I've been using terry cloth towels, really big, thirsty, comfy ones for uh, ever. I tried to experiment, excuse me, with the um, those microfiber ones. And while it did wick the water, it was the most uncomfortable wicking of water experience in my entire life. I tried it for a month and I'm like, this just isn't going to work. Uh, it was like drying off of the, I don't know, like a newspaper. It just that was a terrible feel. So I donated those and um, went back to Target Terry cloth towels. Love them. <laughs> Mercy, yeah. How do you make hot water in the summer of Florida? Turn on the hot, cold water. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, uh oh. Check your temp. Check your watch. What time is it? Oh, this is so exciting. Okay, so now what we're gonna do? I'm gonna show you this. So it took what? 25 minutes for sure. Maybe because we're sitting there looking at it, it took a few minutes longer. I can definitely smell, you know, hot metal. Not in a dangerous way, but you just because it's getting really hot and it's not moving anything through the unit. It's sitting right here. Unlike a furnace that's blowing air through it, it doesn't get as hot, I've noticed. I've never had that uh, smell, except for just making hot water. So it's clearly done. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it off so I don't forget this and I'm burning up. So you got, again, that's the furnace. And this is hot water. And this thing cycles like this. This is the timer I think she was talking about. So you can set it. Never used it, sorry. Um, I'm gonna turn this to off, press the middle button for enter, and we're done. All right, so now what we're gonna do, this is next up on the agenda, is I am going to try to explain, oh, that's kind of dirty, let's put that back in, um, why the water miser is so important in a van. Because what I'm gonna do is, um, this is cold water on my unit, cold water filtered, if I flip this up all the way, this is hot coming from the plumbing system, which runs under the floor, under this thing, and out, out of the truma. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on full blast, and then we're going to hold the um, um, thermometer up to it and watch the water temperature change and see how much water goes down the drain. And this is the point of the water misers in, they usually don't have this at the, at the sink here, it's usually in the bathroom. Because what if we had a water miser here, what we'd do, we'd flip a lever and the water would not really go down the drain, although it does. Um, I'm not sure I'm explaining this correctly, but it does. It recycles back into the water tank, not actually going down the drain into the waste tank. It's pretty ingenious. And um, in fact, there's no water going through it. Now that I think about it, um, there's a disc that turns color. So it's pumping around, not through the faucet. And when it changes color, then you hit the tap and you have hot water instantly, although it took 25 minutes uh, to make. And that's why it's a great system because you're not wasting this amount of water waiting for it to get hot. All right, let me get my trusty thermometer going here. So let's I'm have to do this anyway. So let's see what this comes up as. So 
So that's about comfy for your shower for me. Let's see how hot this gets. So 120. So it wasn't a huge waste of water, but nonetheless, looks like we're going to tap out at 125. It's still going. Anyway, that, that is that is too hot to be showering in for sure. Get the idea, right? That worked out pretty good. I'm proud of myself. That deserves a drink. <laughs> Libation live, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm at the KOA, kind of getting staged, getting a lot of work done. Treat myself to the patio. Look at this great setup. I was hoping to do it out there tonight, but it's uh, it was too windy. And I was trying to do it here, and it was just too windy. So, um, all right, let's put this back. Hope you enjoyed that. Give that a thumb up. If you've never seen that before, hopefully that was helpful. I'll go back over here. Something else I'd like to point out here. So in the current version Travato, um, well, 59 floor plan, this is covered by automotive style seats and all those gauges. And I've got some others up there that, you know, just decor are up here. And the only time I see this is when I'm sitting in this seat. Um, or we do what's up what's up Wednesday and I'm sitting here. But what I like about this implementation is these are all hidden out of sight, whereas if they're up here, they're always in plain sight. Um, so I always like to point that out. Make sure my phone doesn't fall off. There we go. All right. Are we having fun? We're doing our time. Uh, there we go. So hopefully... I'm going to kick this off, actually, remove, just to get rid of that. Um, there we go. So hopefully Donna will see this at some point, and hopefully that explains what it is, um, the Truma system, how it works to make hot water. Heat's kind of the same way, except heat is like instant. Well, it takes about two minutes, but it gets super hot. If you go to their website again, you can see the difference between electric heat and uh, propane heat. And I think they show the same thing with water. Um, I might be wrong on that, but propane is the way to, propane is the way to go uh, on there. So Donna, thank you for the question. Hopefully that helped you understand how to make RV hot water. What do you think? <laughs> we all tune to talk about hot water. At least it wasn't toilet stuff tonight. How about that? Okay, this is my uh, poison of choice tonight. If you've not had Knob Creek um, and you like bourbon, um, this is one of my favorite brands. It's pretty readily available. I bought a bunch today at the Costco here in Arlington in preparation for Eclipse and the uh, Vambri down in um, Bisbee. Um, some are brand new, never tried before, but Knob Creek is is so consistent. And I might be wrong on this, but I think it's a Jim Beam brand. Um, it, this is a single barrel, nine years. This has been percolating in the barrels there and uh, not super expensive, pretty easy to find. This one is... Um, like this. So uh, hopefully you have a, a libation of some type, sorry, um, for the eclipse. So cheers, everybody. Thank you for joining me tonight. Mm. The color is just absolutely, <clears throat> Ooh. it always makes your taste buds stand up. The color is absolutely spectacular on this. These, by the way, I've only got three real glasses, glassware in my van. I've got two of these, the one that was special made for me, kind of by complete randomness in um where were we warsaw indiana a glass cutter i've been cutting edging like cutting glass like this since 1905 or something like that if you haven't seen that video that was a oldie but a goodie um so great all right let's see uh so david says he's um going for, uh, heading to watertown uh, new york for the eclipse three hour drive first real trip in the van congratulations sir let us know how that turns out uh here's terry in the terry in the house <laughs> howdy from the corner of winslow arizona terry two things you should not miss the corner i've street camped there um you probably know this it's one block off the main drag about two blocks down and then if you walk down kind of all the way through the winslow corner there's an amazing hotel I can't think of the name of it. it's super historic other than that there's not a lot in winslow sad to say um
<laughs> yes, SK. Um, only someone in tech calls uh, uh, the hamburger menu. Yeah, I used to work for Apple a long time ago um, when the um, iPod was just getting going. Um, that was a great ride. And then I uh, moved to a, a developer of enterprise apps. So hamburger menu, I know exactly what that is. If you don't, it's the three lines that are stacked. It kind of looks like a hamburger where the more stuff is. Uh, let's see, Roads of Life got a little late. Uh, that may have been asked, does the hot water system have various ways to heat or just one? Uh, yes, well, propane or electric or a combination. Uh, this Truma system does not use chassis fuel. If I had my druthers, assuming it operates like propane, and we'll use chassis fuel instead, I would be totally into that. But some of these adventure vans I've seen that run off um, the chassis fuel, they have one heating element under the driver or the passenger seat, and that one little vent heats the entire van. Now, embassies figure out a way to use, I think, SBAR. You, embassy people can help me out. And he's got it ducted throughout the van. So very efficient, very well spread. That would be the heat um, using chassis fuel. So I would given the option, kind of dispense with the propane and um, use chassis fuel, just one less thing. But I have my half tank rule. So if I'm not sure where I'm, uh, what the route plan looks like and about a half tank and uh, I fill up, same with water and same with propane. So at a half tank of propane, I go from half to full. I do that about four times a year. Not a lot, but nonetheless, one less thing to deal with, right? Um, so here's Susan. We love newbies. Susan with a 2019 GL uh, AC cut off when unplugged when AC cut off when plugged into 15 amp shore power inverter was at 100%. Um, I don't know exactly. Maybe some can help. Um, the inverter has nothing to do with 100%. It's either on or off. And when you plug it in to shore power, um, it comes on automatically. Now, what I have seen in the past, and I learned this kind of the hard way, is the Coleman Mach is really fussy with sudden changes in current of electricity. So if I've been running the AC because I'm driving, I'm running off battery and driving, running off batteries, a punchline there, um, and I pull into a shore power, I turn the Coleman Mach off so it's not having to think through what the hell just happened to my consistent charge that I was enjoying, and now there's been an interruption. So I'm guessing that might be. Um, I don't know. Maybe uh, somebody else will have. That's the only thing I can really think of. And the reverse is true. So if I am getting ready to unplug from shore power, I go and I turn the Coleman Mach off, because that interruption, it is not happy. It is not happy. It just blanks out. Then it, it does reset, it seems, after a while. But um, uh, can't man do. Are you using the fancy pants broadcaster? No. That's <laughs> a short answer. I just have, you know, uh, that's on my list for sure. Because I spent a gazillion dollars on it. End this adventure. They would know what the snow level is in Northwest New Mexico. I certainly do not. Uh, let's see. We got a few more minutes. How are we doing? Let me know. Mm, so good. <laughs> um, what do you think of the new format of the What's Up Wednesday? Um, Okay, we got big um, streaming live uh, events. We got one in the morning at 11 a.m. Eastern, uh, getting a tour from Sunshine State RVs of the Hilt by Storyteller on their lot. And then here comes a pair of ducks through. We got three mallards needing a date. Maybe they're going solo tonight. That's pretty funny. <laughs> I've sure seen three solo mallards. There's always a, a female in tow. But anyway... Um, and then Friday, 8 Central, 9 Central, 10 Central, doing live stream from a European RV show in Warsaw, Poland. 
And then next Wednesday morning, we're doing a factory tour of the Van Gear Builder. So uh, put those on your calendar, please join us. Uh, KW, thank you for joining. Appreciate that. Never late. So you can always see the replay. Um, uh, have you had any major issues with the Truma Combi? Nope. Neil had a valve go out on his a propane valve, I think, but I've not had anything um, with mine. It, it threw an air code once, which was a little kind of questionable. Um, my, I actually, and this kind of goes back to if you're having problems with your rig, if it's a common RV system like a Truma, heat, hot water, water pump, a mobile technician um, can be your best friend because they come out probably same or next day, charge you a little bit of a you know show up fee, um, but they're pretty reasonable compared to um, waiting weeks, number one, and then having to get a um, uh, you know traditional RV service. Um, what I did, I called somebody um, from a Cracker Barrel, um, got a message, they called me back, said we can't get there till tomorrow, and based on what I was describing to them, she actually gave me feedback from the mobile tech on what to try. And what we, I'm not sure I get the cause exactly right, but the problem solving was I was not plugged into shore power. I had been running my Volta battery. Um, she said, turn the system off, Volta. They knew of it, but weren't certified to work on it. Um, leave it off for about 20 to 30 minutes. They think what happened is this, that there was a little bit of a surge somehow, and the, the capacitors in the Truma board got a little overexcited through a code. And by turning off the Volta system, so I had no power in the van, and went and ate chicken and dumplings, which is my go-to meal in Cracker Barrel, um, let it sit, came back, fired it up, and everything returned to normal. And they said the reason that would probably be that case is the capacitors hold a charge in the circuit boards for a certain amount of time until it, it totally dissipates and is gone. And by clearing the electrical charge in the board, powering it back up. Um, that was a weird shadow. Sorry about that. Uh, or glare, whatever. Uh, that solved the problem. <laughs> I thought about getting a lava lamp in here. I just like my other light better, but uh, allow it to boil. Um, <laughs> I love it. It's so great. Um, let's see. Oh, that's a good idea. These guys are always thinking. You should have a YouTube channel, Roger. <laughs> We will, Roger and Jane, we run the water into a half gallon container until it gets hot. Takes one quart to get hot water to the bathroom sink in our 2021 Travado GL. And that's why I let, so that's a great tip, by the way. I'm not that impatient. So what I do is I let it get hot, turn it off, and then start my bathroom routine. Um, the toilet doesn't pull from the Truma water system. It's a separate system, as far as I know. Um, and by the time I'm done with my teeth cleaning, flossing, all that business, um, the warm water is just a few seconds away, and then I can start the, um, the shower process. So that's a good tip. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Um, some of my systems are still current. Others are pretty dated. Um, uh, any major that we just talked about that? Thank you, KW. Oh, God love you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Love all the information you share. And that's what it is, right? Helping you learn. We all learn together. That's what this, I mean, look at this uh, string of chat here going on. Helping each other out. Um, who's got the beer? Yeah, I'm doing a, uh, I got some really good ones. Where is that today? Costco in Arlington. Now this is kind of interesting. If you are a resident in the Arlington, uh, Texas area, you do need a Costco membership to get into the store and buy gasoline. But this is the only time I've ever seen this in the liquor store, which like in Florida, the liquor store is different than the, the main Costco store. Um, you did not need a Costco membership to go buy booze at the Costco liquor store. And let me tell you, they had brands I've never seen in a Costco before. And I picked some of them up. I spent a little over budget on my, um, bourbon today because I'm like, this is a great, and the prices are the same. And on the receipt, in fact, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? 
because I got out and I'm like, I'm going to remember these. This is what it said. You read that? WB Liquor and Wine. So is Costco now kind of contracting out their booze department? Maybe have access to brands that Costco doesn't or they're small volume so they wouldn't bring them in? Um, this is a genius idea. Let's hope they replicate this because there were some really good stuff in there. Um, so this is the, uh, for example, this is a little off topic, but so this is a Woodward Reserve Double Oak for 50, was it $55, which is a standard Costco price I see at every Costco. Uh, where's the big Woodford? Um, so this is like a liter and 0.75. This is the giant Vanbury size bottle, um, which is uh, $60, which is the same price I pay at the Costco near home base. So I'm hoping they roll this program out because if that's what they're doing, contracting with um, either distributors or good um, uh, quality liquor chain stores, that is really interesting to me. Because I'm telling you, they had the regular section, then they had the special section. And I'm like, <laughs> I got too much bourbon in here already. Um, so somebody got to help me drink it. Uh, let's see how we do on time. Uh, a few more minutes. And... Uh, so, you know, you guys are helping them out. Thank you for this. Um, yeah, I'm oftentimes able to run 15 amp. Um, I shouldn't say that. Well, yeah, as long as you're dialing down the amperage coming into the van, you can do that on your Volta system, dial it down to 10 amps. I found is a sweet spot on a 15 amp circuit. Doesn't trip the circuit, lets you run the AC at your leisure. Um, even when I'm plugged into shore power here, 30 amp circuit, I had this thing set at, I think, 20. Just because I don't want to be tripping breakers. I don't want any issues. I don't need all that juice. Blah, blah. Um, so Neil Britt said his uh, trimmer situation was just a regulator. Easy fix. <laughs> you should have a mobile tech business, uh, uh, Britt. Or Neil, good Lord. Oh, no way. Bone-in fried chicken, my way to go at Cracker Barrel. Um, <laughs> uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm kind of scanning to see if there's any other questions. Using the format helps. Uh, really? I did not know this at all. I've never seen the sign saying no membership necessary. I will go experiment because I'm a member anyway. It's just the greatest thing on earth. Um and uh, and I just asked for an alcohol pass. Is that funny or what? But this one had the best selection I've ever seen in a Costco, and I'm in a lot of Costcos. Um, yeah, didn't we all have an iPod? <laughs> Remember those? Oh my God. They were so revolutionary, right? I had a great run at Apple. Um, started in 2003, the iPod was just getting hot. I was in the channel sales at CDW, some of you know that huge uh, technology reseller and um i left right at the end of 2013 so went to the phone which wasn't sold through our channel the ipad um just a great run um met steve jobs a few times and um i hope they got some tricks up their sleeve the stock has not been doing well this year so far but i'm pretty sure there are a bunch of smart people back there um Matt's saying it could be a liquor liquor licensing issue. It kind of depends on the state for sure, Matt, because a lot of times the hard liquor is inside next to the beer and wine inside their main store. But state liquor, I'm trying to think, uh, like Florida has a separate liquor store right next to the entrance exit. Um, whereas Illinois, it's all just next to the uh, beer and wine. But the selection here was the big thing for me. I'm like, that's amazing. They had McClellan's, and, or um, not McClellan's, what is it called? Mix, mix something. Anyway. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for another What's Up Wednesday. This was episode, I can't remember the number. Uh, thanks for being here. We'll be here um, next week. Um, might try this format. We're going to have some big announcements there. And we've got really cool live streams coming up um, tomorrow morning uh, uh, with the Hilt tour with uh, Sunshine State RVs. And then um, from Poland, Warsaw, European RV show. So you don't want to miss that. So until we see you then, we'd like to say thank you very much, everybody, for being here. And uh-oh, uh can't man do. I tipped it off. Did Steve ever ask you a question in the elevator? Nope. I saw him three different times. He was in behind me 
in the cafeteria line. I'm, my hands are shaking. I didn't know what to do with myself. I just said, howdy. <laughs> and then the two times I asked him from the um, audience, why shouldn't, let's see. Uh, the cafeteria line. And there was just one time that I asked, learned my lesson the first time, um, asked my question that did not go over well at all. And my boss told me, Steve will ask, does anybody have any questions? And you'll be really compelled to put your hand up sit on your hands do not ask a question and um i've never i stayed employed but i have never lived it down since <laughs> so funny oh my god anyway okay ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for being here we'll see you next week and the live stream's coming up we're doing a lot of energy there for you bring you some new stuff and um, as always uh, peace be with you and thanks for watching appreciate it happy eclipse <laughs>